surrounded by spirits, but then the voice in your head shows themselves to other people. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. Sure is. If you have a real ghost story, let's hear it. Share it with us. You can call in if you want to go that route, 855-853-4802. You can write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. I'm Carol Hughes, my sister, Kathy Gordon. I think you can relate to this story today. It's Okay. A, I'll, let's play it, and then we're going to chat okay. about it. Here we go. Hey there, Tony. My name is Tara Pollock. I'm just calling you guys um, because I finally built up the courage to share my stories. I've had an extremely paranormal past, and it became my life. Um, I guess it all started with an imaginary friend I created at the around the age of four or five, and she stuck with me until I was about in grade eight. Um, I have so many stories between between all of that. Uh, that I could share with you guys that I think you guys would love to hear. There is some, um, I would feel things, I would see things, I would hear things. Uh, I realized I had a gift um, in my life at one point as well, and I would get predictions that would come true. Around in grade eight is when my imaginary friend actually showed herself to my friends and my family, which... um, showed me that I'm not fucking crazy like I convinced myself to be. So, um, yeah, I can't tell you all the experiences I've been through within such a short amount of time in a voicemail, but I think you guys would love to hear my stories and would be very interested in what the hell I went through because to this day, still cannot wrap my head around these demonic, angelic things that would happen in my life at a very young age. Um, But now that I'm 23, I've realized that um, that was my life. And there are, there is another realm, I guess you could say. And I'm not crazy. And there are people who do have gifts. So yeah, that's um, all I can say right now. And I'd love to hear back from you guys. I think, yeah, I think you'd like to hear my life basically okay have a great day take care well i do think she needs to share some more information with us about some of the other experiences she touched on a little bit there but one thing i do want to stress is that i think a lot of us who are listening to the show you and i who are talking about things we've all had experiences that you really cannot Mm -hmm. explain And if you're hearing voices or you've heard voices or you see an apparition or something, you know, other people might go to, oh, you're crazy. Well, you're not crazy. You're experiencing Mm -hmm. something maybe they're not open to, maybe they're unable to experience it. Maybe they're in denial of it. I think it's scary for a lot of people. She said an imaginary friend when she was very young. She, She said she made up of imaginary friend. But then other people saw it. Then I wonder, was it really an imaginary friend? Because, you know, kids, a lot of times you say, oh, that kid has an imaginary friend. Oh, that's little, you know, whatever you call him, Randy. That's the my kid's imaginary friend. Is right. it? Or is your kid actually seeing something? Right. And it, it sounds to me, and, and that's why we need to talk to her and get more information from her, because it it doesn't sound to me like it's an imaginary friend. I mean, it might have been a friend, uh, definitely, but was it something she was making up or was it a, an actual entity of some sort? And what makes me think it was actually an entity was because other people saw it. Right. So it can't I be mean, an it, imaginary friend and that, and, that you made up. And that I really want to know about. Like, what's that story? Yeah. Where other people saw it. Like, what happened? How did they react? That's what I'm really fascinated in. I'd really like to hear hear more about that. I, and I get how people will say, oh, you're crazy, because you're seeing things that do, it doesn't make sense to them. So the default Sometimes it is, doesn't make sense to us. Exactly. So people will default like, oh, you're crazy. She's crazy. She's seeing things. But it's interesting because this week I interviewed a psychic And it was for our show, The Grave Talks. And you can find that conversation on The Grave Talks. 
Um, her name's Cynthia Killian. And she was really interesting because she was a kid who grew up very different. Now, in your head, you don't always realize you're different from the other kids and that you're right. experiencing things in a different way. And then she realized that the other kids weren't experiencing what she was experiencing. It was very interesting to me. Yeah. And at one point in the conversation, she said that people who have that ability, like she has that ability, really feel strong. She feels really strongly about mentoring other people who have that ability to oh. help them and help them through it. Cause it's a lot, mm -hmm. you know, and she might be yeah. like that. And it's a lot right. to deal with as a person, you know, we're a very judgy society. Yeah. So if you have anything that's well, different, you wear the wrong pair of jeans that other kids are going to make fun of you. If oh you my gosh, talk it, about an imaginary friend, oh my God. I can remember as a child living in a haunted house, I just was, I didn't want to tell anybody because it would make me, it, I would be ostracized for it. Mm -hmm. Like you, you wouldn't want to, and, and plus who wants to come see you at your house or stay the night at your house, right? Nobody, right? I know. I remember once we went out of town, we always would go to my grandmother's house and we came back from there and I went over to my best friend, Brenda's house who lived right next door. And from her living room, she could see out to the lake and then she could see our house. And I went over to her house when I got back because we were best friends. We saw each other every single day. And she said... You know, when you were gone this weekend, somebody went in your room and turned the light on and sat on your bed. Mm -hmm. But Brenda saw that, and there was nobody home. And so she saw that from her house. And I remember, rather than it scaring me, I was like, God, I hate living in that house. Like, it was embarrassing to me. It <laughs> was. It was It was terribly embarrassing, you know? right? You learn real early that you don't say things that... You know, you hide a lot of things as a kid and in a lot yeah. of different scenarios. But yeah, that was one thing. Man, everyone will think I'm totally crazy. So I'm just not going to say anything to anybody. I don't know if she really has any abilities. I mean, I think she is a very, she's obviously sensitive and I think she might have some abilities and maybe talking to someone about it who also has those kind of abilities could be helpful to her. Yeah, Instead I hope of she'll, dismissing her. she'll call back with some more details on some of the stories. Yeah, I would like to hear that. And I have another story. You ready? Good. Let's. Yeah, I am. Hi, guys. I have a few paranormal experiences I could share from my childhood, but I've decided to share this one. I grew up in and around Waxhaw, North Carolina. Waxhaw? I think I said that correctly. I was raised in a religious household and was taught different tactics to use when getting that uneasy feeling we all know. I was around 13 years old when the following instance took place. It was in the middle of the night, and I had awoken out of a deep sleep, immediately feeling uneasy. That, I'm going to add right here, that is never good. I've had that happen to me. Mm. I don't like it. As I yeah. looked around, a few feet in front of me stood a short black figure. Paralyzed with fear, I started to scream out, Jesus! My mom taught me that if I could, couldn't muster up any other words to say the name of Jesus. To my surprise, my scream was muted. I had no voice. When I opened a scream for him, the depths of my soul, no noise came out. I covered my head and peered out to see my younger sister sound asleep in her bed. How could she be asleep at a time like this? I thought to myself. I went back and forth with myself trying to figure out what to do next. I could either lay there terrified or or run out of the room to get my parents, the being started to approach me, and I chose to run. Mm. I would have too. To describe yeah, the layout yeah. of my bedroom from the view of my bed, diagonally in front of me was my closet, and beside that was the door. I had to run past the being to make it out oh, the door. See, there, oh, oh my gosh, yeah. Ooh. The moment I decided oh. to do so is a blur. I don't remember the events after getting out of the room until the following morning. My older sister was in the room beside my and my younger sister's room. She and I talked about our nights, and she filled me in on hers. My older sister had also awoken in the middle of the night and saw a black figure crouched on top of her dresser. There it is, 
crouching oh, on no. a dresser again. Oh, no. Not, like, oh, that's weird. Anything that's what? crouched is not ever good. A crouching position. And I hear that crouched on the dresser bit. We just did a story about you this know? a week or two ago. A crouched, oh. But this is a black oh, figure crouched on top of her dresser. She prayed oh. and prayed, and the being vanished into my room. Good. Is what they think. Oh, oh, my okay. My sister's so just, dresser. She prayed it over to the other room. Yeah, get out of my room. My sister is next door, please. <laughs> yeah, she can handle her. it better than me. Yeah. <laughs> my sister's dresser shared a wall with my closet. I believe once the being left my sister's room, it came into mine. I never saw it again. Creepy. Oh. That is creepy. That's Thanks really a lot, creepy. sis. Please, please go into my what? sister's room. Please leave me alone. Yeah. That is. Oh my goodness. And that's just really strange, too, to wake up and see that. Now, I could never have gotten the courage to get out of my bed and run past it. I don't think I could have. I would have been paralyzed. I know. Fear. When you said that, that's what I was thinking the same thing. Could I have run past something? I don't know that I could have. I just don't think so. But then. Oh. If you feel like something might attack you, but isn't it weird? She never saw it again, which I'm assuming, I'm assuming the sister never did. I'm assuming they never had a problem like this again. But why that night? What was that all about? Isn't yeah. That weird? That is really strange. Um, I don't know. I wonder, had someone died? They had to have been an evil person if that's the case, because why were they crouching on the dresser? I don't and, know. The, and it felt scary to him. It wasn't uh, like it felt like a good presence. Yeah. They were they were afraid. Yeah. I don't know what that one was all about, but that one is it's just, super interesting, like you said, that why it didn't happen again. Yeah. Or 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 at least, you know, feeling like something was around them again, or may, maybe it maybe there were more instances of, you know, feeling things. I don't know. Well, she did say, I have a few paranormal experiences I could share, but I'm sharing this one. So there's other things. Could have been. They Uh were raised in a religious household, maybe. I don't know. That one is creepy to me. If you like the show and want an ad-free experience, sign up to be a premium subscriber through applepodcast.com. Try it three days free or sign up through patreon.com slash real ghost stories or ghostpodcast.com. For all of us here at Real Ghost Stories Online, thank you for listening.